Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about one of our favorite cities in the world, Dubrovnik. This is a place that after one visit we said I could definitely live here full time. Yes, this is a stunning city on Croatia's Adriatic coast and has a mix of rich history, breathtaking views, and vibrant culture. Today we're going to walk you through the top things to see and do when you visit Dubrovnik, including hidden gems and must-know tips to make the most of your time here. So let's dive in. Welcome to World Wanderers. We're Alicia and Will. Come wander the world with us. Dubrovnik is known as the Pearl of the Adriatic, and it's really easy to see why. It was founded in the 7th century and has a rich history reflected in its well-preserved architecture. Whether you're here for the medieval walls or the crystal clear waters, Dubrovnik has something for everyone. It's also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's also famous in popular culture because it's been a filming location for Game of Thrones, so if you think it looks like King's Landing, you'd be correct. The Old Town is the heart of Dubrovnik and it's completely car free, which makes it feel like you're stepping back in time. The medieval walled city is full of narrow, charming streets, ancient buildings, and has plenty of places to stop for food and souvenirs. Some of the must visit spots inside Old Town include Straden, which is the main street. This limestone paved street is the city's main thoroughfare, lined with cafes, shops, and beautiful architecture. You also have Rector's Palace, which is a 15th century palace, turned into a museum showcasing Dubrovnik's history. And then you have Sponza Palace, known for its stunning Renaissance Gothic design and is now home to the city's archives. You should definitely take your time and explore Old Town, but be prepared for it to be a bit of a maze and there are stairs everywhere. Yeah, this is where we chose to stay and it was awesome to be right in the heart of the city and have a cool spot to pop back into if we got too hot while exploring. Yeah. Keep in mind the hotels in Old Town are pretty small, um, and they don't usually have elevators. Right, so if you have mobility issues or tend to overpack, be aware that you'll be dragging your bags through the long distances of the streets and up many flights of uneven stairs. We stayed at the Hamlet Bed and Breakfast and it was a great location, if a little dated. We thought it was a good value for the price though, which runs about 50 to 100 US dollars per night, depending on if it's off season or on season. One of the most iconic experiences in Old Town Dubrovnik is walking the ancient city walls. These walls were built to protect the city from invaders and they stretch nearly two kilometers around the old town. There's a small entrance fee, but it's well worth it to walk along the edge. This varies by season, but at the time of filming this, the prices are currently 35 euros during the regular season, which is from March 1st to October 31st, and then it's 15 euros during the off season, which is from November 1st to February 29th. It was definitely a highlight for us in visiting the city and well worth its price. As far as the best time to do the walls tour, we'd recommend going early in the morning or late in the afternoon to avoid the heat and the crowds. There's very little shade on the walls and it can get hot. The walk takes about two hours and offers spectacular views of the sea, Old Town, and its surrounding islands. And make sure to wear comfortable shoes. Next up is one of the best ways to get a bird's eye view of Dubrovnik, and that's taking the cable car up to Mount Surge. The ride is pretty quick, and once you're at the top, you'll be treated to a panoramic view of the city, the coastline, and some of the surrounding islands. Our tips for the cable car experience would be to go at sunset if you can. We went during the middle of the day, which was super hot, but if you can, time your ride for sunset. The colors of the Adriatic at sunset are unforgettable. And while you're at the top, check out the Fort Imperial, a fortress from the Napoleonic era that now houses a museum about the Croatian War of Independence. Our next suggestion I personally loved, and that's the island of Lokrum. Hop on a short ferry ride to this lush oasis just 15 minutes from Dubrovnik's harbor. Well, in Lokrum, you can visit the Botanical Gardens, which has a beautiful variety of exotic plants. Keep an eye out for the island's friendly peacocks that roam free there as well. They're all over the island. Um, you can also visit the monastery ruins, which are the ruins of a 12th century Benedictine monastery. This is also where you can sit on the original Iron Throne for all you Game of Thrones fans out there. HBO gifted it to Croatia, and there's normally about a 10 minute or so wait to sit on it and take your picture. Or as many pictures as you'd like, as the case may be for me. Yeah. <laughs> And then there's the highlight of Okram, which for us was the swimming spots. This island offers several places to swim, including a small salt lake called the Dead Sea. There are some huge rocks that you can jump off of into the beautiful water, 
and uh, some clothing optional sections as well, which are quite popular. There's also some awesome beaches on the mainland if swimming is high on your list of things to do. The water is usually crystal clear, but a little cool. One of the top spots for sun and sea is Banje Beach. This is Dubrovnik's most popular beach and just a short walk from the old town. Kavtat is also a good option. It's a charming coastal town about 30 minutes or so away and is known for its relaxed vibe and crystal clear waters. Elefiti Islands are also perfect for a day trip. This small group of islands is easily reachable by boat and offers pristine beaches and small fishing villages. All that exploring will definitely work up an appetite. Dubrovnik is full of amazing restaurants that offer fresh seafood, local Croatian dishes, and Mediterranean flavors. For seafood, you can't leave without trying some of Dubrovnik's fresh seafood, especially black risotto or grilled fish. Pekka is also very popular. It's a traditional Croatian dish where meat and vegetables are slow cooked under a bell-shaped lid. And don't forget to pair your meal with some Croatian wine, like a glass of Mavasha white or Plava Shmali red. And if you love Mexican food like we do, we definitely recommend Mex Cantina Bonafide in Old Town. They had super delicious fresh food. That was probably our favorite meal of yeah. the trip. And maybe Mexican isn't like what you're thinking of for a trip to Dubrovnik or Croatia, but if you're there for a number of days and want some variety, well worth a stop. Definitely. So before we wrap up, here are a few practical tips to help you get the most out of your visit. When you visit will definitely affect your experience. Peak season is July and August, which are also the busiest months with the best weather, but the biggest crowds. And cruise ships pull in daily during the summer months, so the middle of the day, it gets packed with people. If you are there during the cruise ship season, I would suggest doing day trips while the cruisers are there. You can also consider visiting in May, June, or September to enjoy the sites with fewer tourists while the weather is still really good. For currency, Croatia uses the kuna, so make sure to have some on hand for small purchases. As far as getting around, Dubrovnik is a walkable city, but there are also buses and taxis if you need them outside of the old city walls. Right, and if you're planning to visit the nearby towns, renting a car can be a great option as well. It's also a great location to take day trips from. We had a few extra days to play with, and we booked two different day trips through Viator, which were amazing. Yeah, one of the days we went down to Montenegro and visited the city of Kotor in the beautiful and stunning Kotor Bay. And another day we went to Bosnia and Herzegovina to see the town of Mostar. Both days were excellent, hassle-free, and we made a bunch of cool stops along the way. And that's it. Dubrovnik's a city that offers something for every type of traveler, from history buffs to beach lovers to Game of Thrones fans. We can't wait to go back. If you enjoyed this travel guide, make sure to like, subscribe, and drop a comment below with your favorite part of Dubrovnik. Until next time, safe travels!